joy to have you here worshiping our God in Christ with us this day. It is the fifth Sunday in Lent. And friends, that means that next Sunday is Palm Sunday, the beginning of Holy Week. And so we have quite a few announcements for the benefit of the body of Christ this day. First, our Lenten soup, our last Lenten soup, will be this Wednesday at 6 o'clock p.m. The young adults are making a variety of soups. And so join us this Wednesday at 6 o'clock for, well, it will be many different soups. And so come check it out. And then at 7 o'clock, our classes will take place. Tori will be teaching on how to install apps in your phone and what are apps. And I will be teaching on herbal tea tasting. And so if you come to my class, there will be a tasting of herbal teas. I wanted to clarify, there will not be caffeine because I know that's not what we want at 7 o'clock at night. And so we'll get to learn all about herbal tea. And those are our classes for our last Wednesday. Thank you so much to everyone who has made soup, who has baked, who has set up, who has broken down, who has taught, who has participated in our Lenten soups. It has really been a fun, fun time together. Next Sunday, for Palm Sunday, we will have a procession. And so anyone who would like to proceed into worship, waving their palms, is welcome to join us before worship in the back of the sanctuary. And we will wave our palms as we come in for Palm Sunday worship next Sunday. Also, next Sunday and then Easter Sunday, we will collect our one great hour of sharing special offering. And this offering goes to the Presbyterian Church's one great hour of sharing, which benefits those suffering from natural disasters. And particularly this year, we'll be going to help with relief efforts of Ukrainian refugees. Today, after worship, there is Fellowship Hour hosted by the Congregational Care Commission. So feel free after worship to come on downstairs and to enjoy some fellowship, meet old friends, meet new friends, and have a snack. Also, for Holy Week, please note Holy Week, you know, next Sunday is Palm Sunday. Hey, thanks, Riley. The light just changed. All right. <laughs> For Holy Week, next Sunday, Palm Sunday, as we process in with the palms, after worship, the deacons are hosting a brunch. And so please plan, if you feel comfortable doing so, staying after worship for the deacons' brunch. On Maundy Thursday, we will have a dessert time at 6.15 p.m., desserts and coffee, followed by worship at 7 o'clock. That is on Maundy Thursday. And friends... One final announcement, Spring Festival. On Sunday, May 1st, we will have a pet blessing and Spring Festival from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. We will be blessing the pets. So if you haven't noticed, there's a lot of folks in our neighborhood that have dogs. And I'm sure they have other pets as well. And they'll be invited to bring their pets up and I will bless them. But there will also be fun for kids, games, and again, food trucks. There are yard signs located downstairs if you would like to grab a yard sign to put in your yard to advertise the Spring Festival. That is the conclusion of my announcements. Sarah Jane has announcements as well. Good morning. Um, so next Sunday we do have youth group and the youth will be stuffing all of the Easter eggs for the Egg My Yard fundraiser. Um, we were going to do a pizza party, but we have the Palm Sunday brunch, so we'll do We'll eat at the brunch, and then we'll go stuff the eggs for the fundraiser. And then the following Saturday, the night before Easter, we'll go deliver all the eggs and hide them in the yard. <coughs> Excuse me. And then also on Saturday, April 24th, I believe it's the 24th? 23rd. 20, 23rd. Okay. <coughs> Saturday, April 23rd, it's in your bulletin. We are doing the pop-up yard sale in the church parking lot. So that's for the neighborhood, that's for church members, anyone who would like to participate in the pop-up yard sale. These funds are going to the young, young adults for updating Finley Hall. So if you would like to participate in that, information is in the bulletin. Feel free to email myself or Karen Shine to sign up. Thanks. For updating Finley Hall, Sarah Jane, Ryan. What's happening? Is someone updating Finley Hall? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. Sure. I have, I have prepared a statement. 
<laughs> so, uh, yeah, so we talked last Sunday, and actually this is something that the young adults wanted to do pre-COVID. Um, but right, right before we were actually all set up, and he's hiding, but that's going to be our build captain over there. Chris, Chris is going to be. Um, so he was, he was starting to get everything together. We started getting pricing. Um, because I think we can all admit when you walk into Finley Hall that we can use a, a little bit of a, I don't know, complete renovation. So, um, so we were looking at flooring and painting and, and different projects like that. We were going to have a little bit more information for you guys as it comes by, but we're, we're going to start gathering um, just pricing and we're, we're looking at, we're going to need some external help as well from all of you, which we would hope we know that this church is really good at giving for a project that they um, can, can enjoy and use as well. So we'll, we'll be getting more information um, to you. We're going to start getting some uh, flyers out, and posters out, and things like that just to keep you aware. But we're, we're starting that, and that'll be, the idea is this summer we're going we're gonna to really you know, do what we can to make that space really nice. So we'll get you more information within the coming weeks. Thanks. Thank you, Ryan. Okay, and thank you, Chris, because I know you're doing a lot of the work on this, a lot of the background work. Thank you. I'll just communicate everything. He can do the rest of it. I'm happy with that. Let us remember why we are here this fifth Sunday of Lent. Just taking a deep breath, being fully present in this space to worship our God in Jesus Christ with the lighting of the Christ candle.
Trinity, a 19th century Carmelite nun, said, Let us ask God to make us true in our love, to make us sacrificial beings, for it seems to me that sacrifice is only love put into action. Let us prepare for God to mold us and make us and make us by praying together with the prayer of confession. Please join me. Purifying God, we grow comfortable with the way things are in our lives, in the church and in the world. We do not always welcome the new life you offer in Christ, for you overturn our notions of power and protocol. Sure of our own righteousness, we are critical of others. Wanting to control our assets, we hoard the gifts you give us. Forgive us, we pray, for seeking our gain at the expense of others. Help us bend our lives toward your own life, self-giving and sacrifice. Fill us, our homes and churches, the whole world, with the abundant love of Christ until all are made new. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. In Philippians, the Apostle Paul reminds us that we do not make ourselves righteous. Our own righteousness comes through faith in Christ, who has made us his own. Hear the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. The old life has passed away, and the new life has begun. Amen. Jesus came and he did all these new things that nobody was expecting. 
He, first of all, no one was expecting that God would come in the form of a little baby in Bethlehem. And no one was expecting that God would come and be a carpenter. And in our story today, there are some other unexpected qualities of God. And I'm going to read this story for you from the children's Bible. It is the story of the thankful woman. And it starts, feet. Some people think feet are stinky. Other people think feet are funny and cute, especially baby feet. Feet can be ticklish or tough. Many of us depend on our feet to get us where we need to go, at least to get us to our cars or buses or bikes or trains. But in Jesus' day, no one had cars or buses or bikes or trains. Most everyone traveled by foot, wearing sandals or donkey. Good point, Mike. But most people didn't have donkeys all the time, and so they had to walk in their feet, in their sandals, and imagine how dusty and dirty and yucky and sore their feet would be by the end of the day. And now imagine they're going to someone's house for supper, and with everyone sitting on the floor, kind of like you are right now, at a low table, getting ready to eat, and everybody can see everybody's stinky, dirty, yucky feet. Ew is right, absolutely. And so in Jesus' day, you would have your feet washed when you went to dinner. The servant would wash your feet so that it wasn't quite so ew, right? Well, in today's story, Jesus goes to his friend's house, to Martha and Mary and Lazarus' house for dinner. And Mary, his good, good friend, she washes his feet and takes the most expensive perfume that she can find. The perfume's pretty pricey, friends. She finds expensive perfume and pours it on Jesus' feet, kind of like how Savannah's wearing sandals. Jesus would be like that. And pour the perfume. She poured the perfume all over his feet and then used her long, long hair to scrub and wash the feet. It was wild. And everyone said, why is she doing that? That's so gross. Why is she doing that? And Jesus said, it is an act of love. Mary knew that Jesus was important. And she did something completely new. And then that week, Jesus did something completely new. He created the Lord's Supper, the bread and the cup, to show he loved us. There are so many new things that we're going to learn about in the week to come that were new to the people in Israel and new to all of us as we grow up and learn about them. And we give thanks for that. If you look at the picture, David, there she is washing Jesus' feet. And everyone's going, what? But Jesus is so appreciative of her love. So let's pray. We bow our heads. And dear God, thank you so much for Jesus. Thank you for the new life that Jesus gives us. Thank you for the Lord's table. Thank you for the love that you give. Help us to love others as you have loved us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much, everyone. And Miss Taylor has a lesson for you today at Children's Church. Oh, and all the kids said, Amen. Thank you. This morning's Old Testament reading is from Isaiah chapter 43, verses 16 through 21. This is what God says, the God who builds a road right through the ocean, who carves a path through pounding waves, the God who summons horses and chariots and armies. They lie down and then can't get up. They're snuffed out like so many candles. Forget about what's happened. Don't keep going over old history. Be alert. Be present. I'm about to do something brand new. It's bursting out. Don't you see it? There it is. I'm making a road through the desert, rivers in the badlands. Wild animals will say, thank you, the coyotes and the buzzards, because I provided water in the desert, rivers through the sun-baked earth, drinking water for the people I chose. 
the people I made especially for myself, a people custom made to praise me. The Gospel reading is from John chapter 12, verses 1 through 8. Six days before Passover, Jesus entered Bethany, where Lazarus, so recently raised from the dead, was living. Lazarus and his sisters invited Jesus to dinner at their home. Martha served. Lazarus was one of those sitting at the table with them. Mary came in with a jar of very expensive aromatic oils, anointed and massaged Jesus' feet, and then wiped them with her hair. The fragrance of the oils filled the house. Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, even then getting ready to betray him, said, Why wasn't this oil sold and the money given to the poor? It would have easily brought 300 silver pieces. He said this not because he cared two cents about the poor, but because he was a thief. He was in charge of their common funds, but also embezzled them. Jesus said, Let her alone. She's anticipating and honoring the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you. You don't always have me. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Friends, let us pray. Gracious and loving God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight this day and indeed every day of our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I think Jesus took Mary of Bethany's love with him into Jerusalem. I think he acted out her love when he washed the feet of his disciples, especially when he washed the feet of Judas, about to betray him, and Peter, who would deny him. I think he felt, once again, Mary's love, her gentle touch when he was beaten. I think he held on to Mary's love when he looked into her eyes one last time, saying, It is finished. And then I think Jesus took all of that love into the tomb, all of that love that would then love him into his future as the resurrection and the life. So writes the Reverend Caroline Lewis. And I agree with her. What looks like an embarrassingly impractical act on the part of Mary of Bethany is an act of love. So much love. By show of hands, how many of us have ever experienced love to be a practical thing? Uh, a couple. A couple. Love seems kind of practical at times. But there might not be a whole lot of you that said that you've experienced love as something practical. I know for me, love has rarely been practical. When I fell in love with my husband, it certainly was not for practical reasons. I really like his eyes that are somehow green and brown at the same time. <laughs> love is rarely practical, however much Judas wishes it were otherwise. Judas, I, I don't think of Judas as a man who has ever been in love, as a man who has ever experienced great love. For Judas is practical as these Gospels present him. He is an exceptionally reasonable, practical man. Give all this money to the poor, he declares. And our first encounter with him some chapters ago went the same way. He makes the same declaration. We have these resources. We must use these resources wisely. Let's find a practical way to enact social justice in the world using these monetary gifts from the women who are sponsoring our ministry. Judas has likely done his homework. He knows which charities keep what percentage for administrative costs. He knows which nonprofits will use the money to appeal to them for more money in the form of seemingly weekly mailings. And somewhere along the way, Judas probably created an Excel spreadsheet for the disciples. And somewhere along the way, Judas's practicality carried him into the region of 
I'm the only disciple who gets our finances. I'm the only disciple who gets that we should be giving to the poor. I'm the only one who knows what we need to be doing, and, and I'm going to need some funds myself if I'm going to support us and keep us on this trajectory, and I will just create this secret budget line item to, to take care of myself. It's only practical. It's only practical. But practical is not a word that appears in our scriptures. Practical is not a word we find in our confessions of faith. Practical is not a fruit of the Spirit. Love, something we never see in Judas. Love, what we see in Mary of Bethany. Love is the fruit. Love is in our Bibles. Love is in our confessions. Love is what carries Jesus into the Garden of Gethsemane all the way through to his resurrection. And love is often spectacularly, wonderfully impractical. On one hand, anyone who has watched season two of Bridgerton knows the theme of the impractical nature of love. On the other hand, it is also a lesson learned by those who watched a much more G-rated version of the theme. The impracticality of love is seen in the film Encanto. Now, for those of you who do not know the premise of Encanto, I want to get to know you. <laughs> I think I've seen Encanto 15, 16, 17 times because I live with a seven-year-old. And so every day after school, can we go watch Encanto? Can I turn Encanto on? Thank God for turning red, the other new Disney film, because it's put a pause on Encanto for a little bit. But it's always now. Can we watch Encanto? Can we watch Turning Red? Can we watch? Anyway, I digress. For those of you who do not know the premise, Encanto is about a multi generational family dwelling together in an enchanted house in Colombia. It's a Disney film. And every member of this multi generational family, all living together in this enchanted house, they receive a gift in their childhood when they're about five years old. As protagonist Mirabelle narrates in the film start, she says that her Tia Peppa controls the weather when she's unhappy while the weather gets weird. Her mom, Julieta, hears her deal. The thing is, she can heal you with a meal. Her cousin Dolores can hear a pin drop. Camilo shapeshifts. Her older sisters, Isabella and Luisa, one strong, one graceful, perfect in every way. The supernatural gifts of these family members are put to practical use. Louisa, she moves churches, bridges, donkeys, etc. Julieta, she heals the village with arepas. All in all the practical use of all these wonderful gifts. The primary conflict of this film is love. The family as a whole, in seeking to be practical, they lose sight of love as they work diligently, dedicating their practical lives to the practical use of their gifts for the practical benefit of their practical village. It isn't until there's an impractical disruption that the impracticality of love takes its rightful place as the foundation of their home. It is when we embrace the inherently impractical nature of love that we can understand the love of Mary of Bethany today. A modern theologian writes, Mary She's unconcerned about Jesus' eternal destiny. Mary does not anoint him because she thinks he will win. She does not caress his feet with her hair because she knows about and believes 2,000 years of Christian doctrine. Mary of Bethany is not there in her home she shares with Martha and Lazarus to receive either compensation or reward. She may well fear Jesus's pending defeat at the hands of those who seek his life. That does not deter from her mission of love. She will love Jesus extravagantly all the same. Likewise, when we embrace the inherently impractical nature of love, we can understand Jesus' love, his love for Mary of Bethany, his love for Judas Iscariot, his love for us. 
Mary of Bethany pours a pound of expensive perfume onto Jesus' feet, washing his feet with her hair. The story continues. The next night, Jesus' feet still right with the scent of perfume. He takes the bread and the cup. He blesses it, breaks it, distributes it, saying, This is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. He includes Judas in his distribution. Jesus gives communion to Judas. Jesus, he, he weeps tears of blood in the Garden of Gethsemane, showing in practical love as he heals the ear of one of his captors, heals, loves one of the very men sent to capture him. Jesus resigns himself to the forty lashes from a whip, even as the angels wait with bated breath to save him if Jesus would only give the word. Jesus is crucified, all his friends having abandoned him, his naked body on display as he awaits death, proclaiming, Father, forgive them, they know not what they do. Love, even in his unimaginable agony, love. Jesus then is risen from the grave three days later, loving those who abandoned him. There is not a moment, not a moment of practicality in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Practicality is not a fruit of Christ's spirit. But my God, there is a lot of irrational, extravagant, luxurious, sacrificial, impractical love. Mary of Bethany's love for Jesus makes sense when we see Jesus' love for us. One day, the teacher, Frederick Wilson Wilkerson, he asked Maya Angelou to read to him. Maya Angelou, she was only 24 at the time, but already brilliant and quite worldly. And he asked her to read from Lessons in Truth, the section which ended with these words, quote, God loves me. She read the piece and she closed the book and the teacher said, read it again. So Maya, she opened the book and she sarcastically read, God loves me, he said, again. And after about the seventh repetition, Maya Angelou began to sense that there might be truth in the statement, that there was a possibility that God really did love her. Her, Maya. She began to cry at the grandness of the idea. She knew that if God loved her, that she could do wonderful things. She could try great things, learn anything, achieve anything. For what could stand against her with God, since one person, any person with God, constitutes the majority? Perhaps, beloved in Christ, it is time to rethink some of our practicality. It's one thing to be practical when buying a car. Is it safe? How many miles does it get to the gallon, etc.? It is quite another thing to be practical when it comes to following Jesus. What would it look like for us to set aside the practical in order to love one another and to love Jesus Christ, our Lord? Now, I don't mean to love one another and love Jesus Christ extravagantly in the sense of with a lot of money. No. But to love wholly. To love in a way totally impractical and fully extravagant. What would it look like for us to release ourselves into loving the Christ who loves us, into loving humanity as Christ loves humanity? In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our affirmation of faith is the Nicene Creed, which is over 1,500 years old, and so we join our voices with the saints who have gone before in the ages and ages of the past. Let us declare what we believe together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him 
all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Before I come around with the microphone, joys and concerns that I have before us this day, we lift up in prayer Roberta Allison. Roberta is going to be heading in on Tuesday for a procedure and possible surgery. And so we lift Roberta up in prayer. Right. We also continue to pray for Noah Latronica. This is Sarah Jane's student. His family has been informed he's five years old, and um, they've been informed to whatever they want to do, whatever dreams they want to fulfill, whatever memories they want to make, go forth and do them now. And so they are leaving on Tuesday for a Legoland vacation in California. And so we continue to lift Noah and his family up in prayer. We pray for Tom Ursitz. This is Cheryl Ursitz's husband, Lisa Ursitz's father. He was in the hospital over the weekend. He is now home. And we continue to pray for our sister in Christ, Evelyn Lake. Now I'll come around with the microphone for any other prayer concerns that need to be lifted. Ryan, go ahead. Or, thank you, Ryan. Welcome back, Mary. As many of you know, I was away last week on a cruise, which was lovely. But my friend Mary Ann, who I went with, fell. Uh, not even halfway through, and broke her arm, oh. her right arm, and she's right-handed. Oh. So it did make things a little more difficult for her, and so I asked for prayers for healing, um, that she's relieved of pain, and that she gets well soon. But I would also like to ask prayers, and this is a lesson in the graciousness of people. The woman who picked us up from the hospital in Natchez, her name was Brenda, was as wonderful as could possibly be. She waited 45 minutes for me while I got the prescription filled because we couldn't go around to see Natchez on the tour. She drove us herself all around the city so we could see the sights, spent over two hours with us. And, here, and she only wanted to charge us $10. Here it turned out she was leaving that evening to drive to New Orleans for cancer surgery. So I'd like prayers for Brenda for healing. She's a wonderful woman, and we are so grateful for her kindness. Thank you. Prayers for Brenda and for Marianne. Brian. So um, some of you might have seen, because it was on the news, um, but a uh, man who was, uh, he was pretty high up, I can't remember exactly his ranking, um, from the 9-11 Air Force Wing, passed away in a car crash uh, last Sunday. That was the father of one of my students. Um, they were all together uh, driving over in Ohio last week, and he lost control uh, due to the snow, and him, his wife, and their four children. Um, so it was all four, the four children and his wife all walked away just fine, but he lost his life. Um, so if you read into it, we, we think he managed to kind of get himself in the position to kind of take the full force of the impact. So it was a little rough week at school this week. Um, when, Four of our students lose a parent. Um, so just prayers for the Prettis family. His name is Jacob Prettis. Um, so that he was a Air Force lieutenant or something. He was really high ranking in the 9 left. He was a reservist there. So you can see his story. They had some uh, uh, very big funeral on Friday for him. A lot of people there. Um, so it was, it's, it's just uh, it's very harrowing. Really, really gets you to appreciate the love that parents have. And uh, just to be really thankful for what we have. So thank you. Thank you, Ryan. Carl. Oh, no. Okay. Are there any others? Friends.
Friends, God is good. God hears our prayers. Let us turn to the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. God, Lord, we give you thanks for gathering us here this day to worship you, to glorify you, to continue to observe this season of Lent, thinking back, dear Lord, on the life of Jesus, on Holy Week, on his journey to Jerusalem and to the cross. God, we give you thanks for the extravagant love of Mary of Bethany and for the extravagant love that Jesus shows to every one of us. We are so blessed, dear Lord, and so often throughout the day, we don't notice those blessings. Sometimes we take them for granted because they are just so much a part of our day-to-day -day life. And God, for those blessings, we give you great thanks. We lift up to you now silently our personal, private prayers of thanksgiving. Lord, to you be the honor and the glory and the praise. Even as we have so much to be thankful for, we give thanks that you are a God who hears and that you are a God whose love never fails. And knowing that, we come before you with the concerns which weigh upon our hearts. We lift up in prayer Roberta as she prepares for her procedure and surgery, praying your blessing upon her praying that you would be with her doctors and all those caring for her, that she would receive the very best care possible as your beloved daughter. We continue to pray for Evelyn, asking God for your healing touch, and that, God, you would provide through her doctors as she continues to seek answers. We lift up to you Noah Latronica, asking, dear God, that you would give him and his family a joyful time in California, that you would bless them with wonderful memories, joy together. We pray for continued healing for Tom Ursitz, that you would watch over him and give his family strength and God that he would receive the care that he needs. We pray for healing for Brenda as she pursues cancer surgery. God, we pray that you would watch over her. We give you thanks for her graciousness and her love. And we pray for healing for Mary Ann as she recovers from her broken arm. Lord, we also lift up in prayer the Predis family, asking that you would wrap your loving arms around them, remind them of the hope of the resurrection. And God, we pray that you would lift the community of Thomas Aquinas to be an encouragement and a support to these four children and their mom in this time of horrible tragedy. God, be, be a light through this community in this time. And now, Lord, we lift up to you silently our personal, private prayers of concern. Lord, hear our prayers. God, hear us as we pray for our sister church in Lichenza, Malawi. As we pray for the Adamses and their ministry as mission co-workers at the U.S.-Mexico border. Hear us as we pray for our World Vision child, Pabatso. And God, hear us as we pray for all the conflicts in this world, particularly for peace in Ukraine. And we lift up in prayer the church in Ukraine as they continue to meet in the midst of war. We pray for all of those men and women serving our nation in harm's way, both locally and abroad. Keep them safe, dear Lord, that they may come home. Be with their families as they wait and those whom they are called to serve. We pray for all those in positions of leadership, that they would seek your wisdom before all things. Lord, go with us into this new week. Guide all that we think, all that we say, all that we do, that in thought, word, and deed, we may glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our tithes and our offerings can be received um, at the back of the church following worship. Mary Abbott, our treasurer, will have a basket to collect the tithes and the offerings. 
We also can give online. Um, go to shopchurch.org and you'll find out more about the Tithely app. There's also a lot on the website about what to expect for Lent and Holy Week. And beloved in Christ, let us join our hearts and minds together in prayer over our tithes and our offerings. Let us pray. Holy Lord, use these the gifts of our tithes and our offerings. May they be used for the sake of your glory and your service. Amen. Let us stand as comfortably able for the doxology.
because we have, if you shake them, you hear it. Um, we have noticed that some of our communion cups did not have red in them. And so I would invite you to double check. If you did not, okay, Roberta needs red. So Ryan's on it. Oh, Tori's on it. One of them is on it. And Marla needs red. Ryan on this side. So Tori to Roberta, Ryan to Marla. And if you could raise your hands. Oh, Rosalie's missing bread also. Okay. And if you could also raise your hand if you did not receive communion. Stay in the little back. Okay. And you got Rosalie. Great. All right. And we're going to let the manufacturer know about this. Take up about the <coughs> bread piece. And friends, I will let you know when it is time to partake of you can follow along with the liturgy as found in your bulletin. Friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. They will come from east and west and from north and south and sit at table in the kingdom of God. According to Luke, when our risen Lord was at table with his disciples, he took the bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him. This is the Lord's table. Our Savior invites those who trust in him to share the feast which he has prepared. Friends, the Lord be with you. And also with you. We lift up our hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give the thanks Let us pray. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise of the Lord our God, creator and ruler of the universe. In your wisdom you made all things sustain them by your power. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with choirs of angels, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all the faithful of every time and place, who forever sing to the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Remembering your gracious acts in Jesus Christ, we take from your creation this bread and this wine and joyfully celebrate his dying and rising as we await the day of his coming. With thanksgiving, we offer our very selves to you to be a living and holy sacrifice dedicated to your service. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these your gifts of bread and wine, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, that we may be one with all who share this feast, united in ministry in every place. As this bread is Christ's body for us, send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. Keep us faithful in your service until Christ comes in final victory, and we shall feast with all your saints in the joy of your eternal realm. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, Almighty God, now and forever. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now here, listen to these words of institution. The Lord Jesus Christ, on the night of his arrest, he took bread, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the saving death of the risen Lord until he returns in glory. Beloved in Christ, this is the holy feast that Christ has prepared for us. And the way that we partake, at this time, you take out your communion. So we begin outside. 
out and right side up. And I'm going to invite you with this time to take a breath. The body of Christ given for you. Take and eat. At this time, I would invite you to turn this over and peel the top off of it.
congregation when I first became pastor here and learned just how much fellowship hour was valued. And so if you feel comfortable doing so, of course, in light of the pandemic, if you feel comfortable doing so, please join us. And friends, I would invite you to greet someone that you don't know very well or someone you haven't met yet. Get to know one another because we have some new friends as well as old friends and we rejoice in all of us getting to be together and to have fellowship. I invite you to now receive this blessing. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. Amen.